Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. It is Sunday, September 3rd. It is about 6 o'clock in the evening and we are headed out to a poker session. We're actually going somewhere new this time. We're going to be going to the Orleans Poker Room. I have not been to the Orleans. I've never stepped inside that casino never seen their poker room so this will be a new experience for me and if it's a new experience for you hopefully this gives you a little insight into what playing at the Orleans is like and what some of the games there are like so we're gonna jump into the one two game I believe it's a $300 max buy-in and hopefully we can run it up just a couple of other updates uh, for those of you that are interested, I know some of you have mentioned in the comments about the mole that graces uh, my left cheek, and I don't know if you can tell in the video right now, but that mole is gone, and in its place right now is uh, a little bit of a scab, but hopefully that'll heal in the next couple of weeks. Turns out there was another mole growing underneath my skin right above that mole and without getting uh, into too much graphic detail that one had to be removed as well and they had to cut that one out so I've got a couple of a uh, couple of uh, healing wounds going on in my face at the moment that you might notice at some point throughout this vlog but all is well and I expect that I will be healing again in the next couple of weeks or so depending on how long it takes the process of healing to occur so uh, yeah that's that got the moles removed and feeling healthy feeling good ready to get out and play some poker Thank you all so much for the continued support and for tuning in, and I will see you all at the table. third hand we are dealt in after sitting down at the table is ace king offsuit in the small blind we've got about a gazillion limpers in the pot actually about five but a gazillion five all the same i make it 20 us dollars to go punishing these limpers they do not like the new price of poker they all fold and we take this pot down with no resistance all right, in this next hand, we do get some action. We've got pocket nines in the cutoff. As usual, we've got a couple of limpers in front of us. I am not going to be limping this hand. I want to raise this up and get some action going. I make it 12 to go. Button doesn't think too long before putting in the call. The limpers, thankfully, decide to get out of the way. So we end up going heads up here to a flop, which is the ideal scenario here when we raise this up pre-flop we see a flop that comes down jack deuce four with two spades i'm going to be c betting this like i would with a hundred percent of my range i make it 15 to go button decides to go ahead and continue here and puts in the 15 dollar call we go to a turn which is the queen of diamonds I again think this is better for my range than his calling range, so I'm going to go ahead and continue betting here. I make it 25. I think I could be going a little bit larger here on the turn. As played, the button calls, and we see the six of spades on the river. At this point, I don't think I can continue betting and continue telling a story here. I go ahead and check. The button decides to check back, and unfortunately, he shows us ace-jack offsuit, and he wins this pot. All right, we pick up a premium pocket pair, the ladies in the small blind. As usual, there are about four limpers in the pot in front of us. I make it 16 big U.S. dollars to go. 
The limpers do not like that price. The gentleman to my right is complaining that I keep raising the pot. I politely show him my queens. We take down this pot uncontested. In this next one, we might be playing a little bit too loose. I've got king six of hearts. I'm in the cutoff, so I have position on most of the players at the table besides the button, obviously. So when it folds to me, I decide to go ahead and widen my range here a little bit. I make it 12 to go. We end up getting called by the big blind and an under the gun limper who was in the pot. So we're going to go three ways here to a flop. Flop comes down pretty good to bluff on, I would say. Ace, ace, six. So when both players check it to me, I think I'm going to continue firing here. I threw out a $15 continuation bet. Both players fold, and we end up taking down a small pot here. All right, this time we've got the king of spades and the queen of spades, and we are in under-the-gun position. I'm going to go ahead and bring this in for a raise. I make it 12 to go. Ends up folding around to the button who decides to go ahead and put in the $12 call. Small blind decides to go ahead and put in the extra money as well. Everyone else is getting out of the way, so we're going to go three ways here to a flop. Flop comes down ace high. We see ace of spades, five of hearts, four of diamonds. I think I can be continuation betting here, but when the small blind checks... I decide to check back. This invites the button to go ahead and put in a $25 bet. Small blind doesn't think too long here before deciding to go ahead and call the $25. I think about my options and I think I could be calling here some percentage of the time to float, but ultimately I decide to let my hand go and we get out of the way here. All right, in this hand, we've got pocket sixes. There are two limpers in middle position in front of us. I'm trying to target the middle position player directly to my right, who's been limping 100% of hands. I make it 12 to go. Unfortunately, both players decide to go ahead and put in the $12 call. So we're going to go multi-way here to a flop. Flop gives us top set. We see six, five, four, rainbow. Both players check it over to me. I'm going to be firing out here a continuation bet. I make it 20 to go. I think this is probably too small considering we're multi-way on a very connected board. I should be going larger here. First player decides to go ahead and put in the call. The player that we were targeting unfortunately decides to let his cards go. So we're going to go heads up here to a turn card, which makes the board even more connected. The seven of diamonds. Now the one card to a straight is out there. I don't think we can continue to get value here from much worse. So I end up checking it back and we see the eight of spades on the river. This is a terrible run out for us. When the player bets 45, I can't help myself and I flick in a call. He turns over ace nine off suit to show that he has the rivered straight and we end up losing this pot. All right, we've got nine seven of diamonds. There's a $6 raise from our friend who has been playing about 100% of hands. I decide to just call the $6 raise here. Middle position player to our right calls, although he does not play a big factor in this pot. So we're going to go three ways here to a flop of eight, six, five with two hearts, giving us the straight right out of the gate. The player who originally raised decides to put in a continuation bet here of 12. Player to my right decides to go ahead and put in the call. I am going to go ahead and raise this up. I think we can get called by a lot of worse hands here. Hands like eight, six, six, five. Any 8x hand like ace-8, king-8, 7-8, they're all going to be calling here. And then, of course, any flush draw is going to be calling here as well. I make it 45 to go, and the original raiser goes ahead and puts in the call. Player to our right folds, so we're going to go heads up here to a turn card, which is exactly what we were looking to accomplish. 
want to get into an isolated spot with this particular player. So when we see the 10 of spades on the turn and the player decides to go ahead and put in the check, I'm going to be firing out here. And I've seen this player make a lot of big speculative calls in big pots. So I decide to go ahead and just go for all of it. I jam it all in here on the turn. This puts the player in to the tank, and he is not happy with this bet. He is staring me down and looking at me with a very upset demeanor. I think he is very frustrated with the fact that we just shoved all in here. Based on his body language, I would guess he has a hand like ace three of hearts or ace deuce of hearts. Maybe even a hand like ace seven of hearts would make sense. He does decide to fold and we end up taking this pot down. Not sure if that was the best play on the turn. I think we could have went for a more reasonable bet size there and probably gotten paid. But again, my read on this player is he had been making some very speculative calls with top pair in big pots. He had also been calling with a lot of gut shots in big pots and getting there on the turn of the river. So I think we can potentially get paid there on the turn when we jam all in. All right, once again, we are going to be trying to isolate our fishy friend on our right who limps in. We get another limper in the cutoff, and I'm on the button with King Jack offsuit. I make it 12 to go, really wanting to get heads up with the player in the hijack. And that is indeed what happens. He puts in the call. The player in the cutoff decides to get out of the way. And we are going to go heads up to a flop. I help the dealer pull in the chips here because she's been having some trouble reaching the chips from across the table. And we see a flop that gives us top pair. Jack 8-4 with two diamonds. The player in the hijack decides to check. I'm going to be firing out here all day long, trying to get value from flush draws, 8x holdings, etc. I make it 15 to go. Unfortunately, the player thinks that $15 is too steep of a price to pay to see a turn card, and they let their cards go, and we end up taking down a small pot here. All right, sticking with the theme for this session, we are targeting the player directly to our right who's limping 100% of hands, and I would say limp calling about 95% of those hands. He has already limped in for $2. I make it 12 to go with ace four of diamonds. We've got position on the player, and we want to get involved heads up. He puts in the call, and that's exactly what happens here when we go heads up to a flop. Flop is pretty good for our exact hand. We end up flopping a pair with the nut flush draw when we see 9-6-4 of diamonds. Player checks it over to us, and I get a little tricky here and decide to check back on this flop. We end up seeing the king of spades on the turn. When the player checks to us for a second time, I think we need to start building a pot here. I think we can also have the best hand a lot of the time with our pair. I make it 15 to go. Doesn't think too long before putting in the $15 call. So we are going to go off to the river here. Let's see if we can't connect with any of our outs. No, we miss. We have the 10 of hearts on the river, just leaving us with a pair. So when the player checks to us for a third time, I think we can check back here, and that's what we do. He turns over ace, queen of hearts, very confidently thinking he has the best hand. I show my pair and we end up taking down this pot. I don't know what this player is thinking of limp calling with a hand as strong as ace queen of hearts. But as played, we end up winning this with our bottom pair. All right, now it's our turn to have ace queen suited. We look down at ace queen of diamonds in the big blind. Under the Gun has raised this up to $15. This particular player is very tight, very aggressive, probably the most competent player at the table from what I've seen. I go ahead and put in the $15 call. We see two other players call as well, so we're going to go four ways to a flop. 
Flop is not good for our exact hand. We see nine, eight, seven with two hearts. This is a very dynamic, very connected board. When it checks back to the under the gun player, they decide to fire out for $35 on this flop. I've already made up my mind when it gets to me, I'm gonna be folding here. I think this is a very dangerous situation for us. We don't stand to have the best hand here very often. We don't have very much equity on this exact flop. So I think the best play here is just to go ahead and get out of the way. Hijack decides to get out of the way. The small blind, who is the fishy player we've been battling with all night, decides to go ahead and stick in the call. We go ahead and fold our hand and we move on. All right, last hand for the vlog and it is a big one. Strap in and buckle up because this one's gonna get wild. We are in the big blind and we end up looking down at pocket queens for the second time tonight. We've got queen of diamonds, queen of hearts. We've got an under the gun raise to $20 ends up folding around to us. I'm gonna be putting in the three bet here with our premium holding. We wanna build a pot and we wanna get value from our ladies. I make it 60 to go. Ends up going back around to the under the gun player who doesn't think too long here before putting in the $60 call, $40 more to them. So we're gonna go heads up. We've got a big pot brewing here. $123 in the middle. We see Jack nine deuce with two spades. When this player calls preflop, I think he's gonna have a lot of ace king suited, ace queen suited, maybe some hands like king queen suited. So he could certainly have some flush draws in his range. I think he would also flat with hands like jacks, nines, tens. So definitely some hands that are ahead of us but I wanna charge all the draws that are in his range. I make it 80 to go. Again, this player doesn't think too long before putting in the $80 call and we see the deuce of clubs on the turn. Pretty much a brick. I mean, any of the full houses now have us beat, but they had us beat on the flop anyway. And we can't be scared of monsters under the bed. So I flick in and all in here. We have less than a pot size bet remaining. $249 for this player to see a river card. He asks for a count. We go ahead and assemble all of our chips so they can clearly see how much they have to call. Doesn't think too long before going ahead and putting in the call. They didn't snap call though, so I think we're still ahead here on the turn a good percentage of the time. My guess is we have to fade the spade on the river. So we go ahead and run it out and we see the six of spades on the river. Not a great card for us. I turn over pocket queens, but this player shows king of spades, king of clubs. They had us dead the whole way. to do after a losing session that's the running pocket queens into pocket kings rock and roll blues right there let me know if you guys enjoy seeing me play guitar and including more of that guitar element into the vlog if you guys like it i will definitely do more of it in future episodes leave it in the comments below um i think most people like music and you know they they dig uh guitar so I enjoy playing. If you guys enjoy it, I'll include more in, uh, in future episodes. So not a great session for us, unfortunately, running our pocket queens into pocket kings. Not sure we could do much else in that situation. I think when the player just calls preflop, it's more likely that he's got hands like ace-king suited, ace-queen suited, maybe even ace-jack suited, just suited Broadway holdings that are more likely to call preflop. I think aces and kings four bet way more often there in that spot. So anyway, um, 
we were in the game for seven hundred and sixty dollars total. We cashed out for two sixty three. I think that's a loss of four hundred and ninety seven dollars. I'll put the totals up here. So a little bit more than a buy in, about a buy in and a half. We were down. Um, yeah, you know, not the best outcome, but I think all things considered, we played the hand fine. I'll have to go back and do a little bit of studying on the hand just to run it through a solver and see what the solver says, but I'm pretty sure it's at least a bet on the turn. Maybe an all-in is a bit of an overplay, but given stack to pot ratio, I think all-in was pretty much the only option there on the turn. And I don't think checking would have been a good play, so... Anyway, um, hope you all enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give that thumbs up button a click. Please click on the subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss future episodes. Do all the YouTube things that please the YouTube algorithm. Put some comments below. The YouTube algorithm apparently likes that too. So. Do all of those things, and I appreciate all of your support. I will see you all in the next episode. Until then, be well, be good to one another, and I will see you soon. Good luck at the tables.